This is how you add an iOS app to App Circle. First, go to your Build tab, and then add a new build profile. So from the target operating system, we are going to choose iOS. And for the platform, we are going to choose Objective-C Swift, since this is a native project. So let's give this project a name. And then hit Save. Once our build profile is created, we can go into detail to connect a repository. So we have a variety of options to choose from based on where your app source code is hosted. So we support GitLab, GitHub, Bitbucket, or you can just connect via SSH or connect to a public repository. We also support GitLab's enterprise and self-hosted versions, as well as self-hosted Bitbucket. So I'm going to choose GitHub since it, my source code is on GitHub. And then once I give access to GitHub, I will see the list of repos that I've given access to. Here's a list of repos that I have on my GitHub account that I've given access to. Make sure that you have repository owner access to these repos, otherwise AppCircle will not show them here. So I will pick my project and hit save. And I see a list of branches and also a list of commits from that branch. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to go to config and configure a branch. So I do my build from my master branch and also my develop branch. So I'm going to configure both since I'm going to get some releases from them. So in this config tab, we are actually determining what app circle will build inside your repo. So we have to specify a Xcode project or an Xcode workspace path and also select the scheme. But to make it easier, App Circle has this Fetch Details button, and when I tap that, it will check the repo and try to fill out all these details for me. So once App Circle fetches my repo and checks it, it will autofill all these fields. So I do have my Xcode project, and if I had an Xcode workspace file, it would be here as well, and also multiple schemes. And we can also just manually update them. We don't have to just select them from a dropdown. So my build scheme is called actually iOS. So I will just manually update that as iOS. The only thing the fetch detail is not filling out is the Xcode version. So you can just pick an Xcode version to be used in your build. So we support the latest Xcodes within the 24 hours of their release. So the latest Xcode version as of recording this video was 13.2. So you can pick that one as well. And we also have three more tabs here, one of them for code signing, which we will discuss in another video. And also we do have a distribution tab to distribute this to testers or to test flight and app store. And the last tab is for the environment variables, which we'll also discuss both distribution and environment variables in another video. So once we do this and go to config and hit save, our branch is configured. Remember, Every configuration is branch based, so if you're going to have a different build scheme on a different branch, or if you're going to do different signing options, or do some different distribution options, you have to configure that branch as well. So once we have this, we can just start a manual build from this commit. Let's just tap build next to the commit list, and it will prompt me with two workflow options. So workflows are basically steps to take while building your app. So our build agents will just take these steps one by one, just like a recipe, and then just build, try to build. So we give you a default of two workflows, one for push and one for pull requests. So it has basically what an iOS app could probably have. It's a default thing. And make sure that you edit those workflows based on your preference. But I will choose the push workflow here and just start a build just to see whether it is going to build or not. So my build has started. While my build is going on, I can just go back and then check my workflows. So as I said, we give you two workflows. We will discuss workflows in detail in another video, but workflows are basically, as I said, these steps to take while building your app. For example, you may not have CocoaPods in your project. You are, you're using SPM or Cartage. So you can just remove that as well. To remove these steps, you can just go to Edit Workflow and then just remove the CocoaPods install step. And also, if you're using Cartage, for instance, you can just drag and drop a new step inside. Uh, but I don't use Cartage as well, so I'm going to remove this as well. Uh, we have a variety of options here for workflows, but you can just, you know, I don't build for the simulator as well. I just want to build for devices. So this is pretty much it. I And I, saw, I also don't want a custom script, so I'm removing custom script as well. But you can just add custom scripts in Bash and Ruby, 
and there are also a lot of different uh, pre-made steps that you can add to and these are also open source so you can just you know check their source and contribute to these components as well and once we hit save we can just save our workflow and the third concept that i really want to mention is triggers triggers are basically what is going to trigger your build what we did here was a manual build so we just tap the button to get a build but triggers are to to automate everything so when you go to triggers you can just set up a new trigger for every push or once a pull or merge request is created or a tag is pushed so we will have a very deep dive detailed video on triggers as well but you can just try and experiment it's very straightforward and that's how you actually trigger a build automatically in app circle let's just check our build whether it's completed well it just ran xcode build for devices successfully and it, it's also compiling for ios simulator you can see your logs here and once our build is done, our project is actually added to AppCircle. And our build is successfully done. See you on the next video.